In today's tutorial, I'm going to be walking you through how to draw one of the most beloved saints, St. Therese of Lisieux, also known as the Little Flower. We celebrate her feast day on October 1st, and for this project you need a piece of paper, a pencil, and something to color with. I also want to give a big thank you to our anonymous donor who donated this ream of mixed media paper. I use it for all of my drawing tutorials here on my channel. Thank you so much. So first we're going to be drawing St. Therese's head. So close to the top of my paper, I'm going to start off by drawing an oval shape. You of course can do any size or shape head that you wish on yours, and it's okay if yours looks a little bit different than mine. The point is that we're having fun and we're spending time learning about this sweet little saint. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put in some curved lines for where her shoulders are going to go. So starting at the bottom of her head, I'm going to do one line that's going to curve down and towards the left. And I'm going to do another line that curves down and towards the right. We're going to work on this arm right here that is holding the cross. So where I ended my line for my shoulder, I'm going to do a curve that comes around for the back of her sleeve. It kind of looks like a letter U. And I'm going to do a diagonal line that comes up like this. But I'm going to stop before I hit her shoulder. I'm going to do one line that kind of comes down back towards that elbow and that creates the shape for her sleeve. We're going to do a really simple hand for St. Therese. I'm going to start off with a big curve to create the long fingers of her hand and I'm going to do a smaller curve for her thumb and this is going to create kind of like a mitten shape for her hand. We're going to draw in her cross next. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line that starts past her shoulder and comes down towards her hand and I'm going to stop and I'm going to continue that line on the opposite side. I'm going to put a second line right next to it. So I'm going to start a little above her shoulder, come down and stop at her hand. And I'm going to continue that line on the opposite side. And this is going to create the main up and down part of our cross. And I'm going to draw a line at the bottom to connect it. I'm also going to draw a line up at the top to connect it. I think I'm going to make my cross just a little bit taller before I connect it like that. We're going to do the shorter part of the cross next. So I'm going to do one line that goes across it like this and another line underneath going the same direction. I'm going to add a line on the left side and a line on the right side to kind of close up those pieces. And I'm going to erase the leftover lines from her shoulder and those guidelines for creating the beam of the cross. We're going to put some fingers on her hand. So I'm going to add some straight up and down lines, kind of separating this bigger shape into four taller fingers. We're going to be adding in some roses that are going to go around the cross. And I did really simple roses. I'm just doing circles. So I start off with a circle shape, kind of like this, and you can put them anywhere that you want all around the cross. She's known as the little flower. And so I wanted to make sure to put lots of different flowers, um, particularly roses around her. So anywhere that you want a rose to go, you're just gonna start off by drawing a circle and you can make your circles as big or as small as you wish. And to finish up those simple roses, you're just going to draw a little spiral. So think kind of like a cinnamon roll. I start in the middle of the rose and I move my pencil around and around in a circular motion. And that creates these little simple roses. If you want to draw the leaves in now you can, but I'm actually gonna do that later when I color in my artwork. We're gonna work on this arm next. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is starting down here, I'm going to draw a line that comes up at an angle towards the middle of her body. And that creates this part of her little cape. 
And I'm gonna do two curved lines um, for the top part of that cape. So it's curved kind of like a parenthesis or a smile. And I'm gonna put two of them right next to each other like that. We're gonna be working on the bottom of her outfit real quick. So um, I'm gonna start off with a line that kind of lines up with her shoulder here. And I'm gonna do one line that comes down at an angle towards the bottom of my paper. And I'm gonna stop when I get it as long as I want it to be. I'm gonna do kind of the same thing where her shoulder would be. I'm gonna line that up right here and I'm gonna do a similar diagonal line coming down the paper until it is as long as I would like it to go. I'm going to connect these two lines with a curved line kind of like a smile and that is going to create the bottom part of her robe. Before we finish these parts, we're gonna work on this arm right here. So um, close to where the bottom part of her cloak is, I'm going to um, put in her hand. So I'm going to do a little curve for her thumb and a bigger curve for her taller fingers. And that's gonna create a mitten shape for her hand. I'm going to draw a circle on top of it to create the rose that she's holding. And I can do that little spiral on the inside to create the um, petals of that rose. I can see a couple of her fingers. So I'm going to draw a couple of lines just straight up and down, kind of on the inside of that mitten shape. And that finishes up her hand. We're gonna finish up her sleeve. So over here on this right side of her hand, I'm going to do a curved line that comes down for this part of her sleeve. And then um, over here, I'm going to do a big curve that comes past that and connects up towards where her body is. I'm gonna add one more line here to connect that sleeve to her cloak. We're gonna add the other part of her robe. We're gonna put in two diagonal lines, one on each side. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of space and add my next line to the right of this side. And I'm gonna come down about the same length as I did here. And I'm gonna add a little curve at the bottom like a smile connecting that together. Between the arm, I'm going to add another diagonal line coming down at a similar angle to that first line we did for her robe. I'm gonna stop when I get to about the same part and I'm going to do a curved line like a smile to connect those together. We're going to do these lines for her cape. They're angled slightly out. So we're gonna do one that kind of matches up with her um, little cloak or cape over here. So again, we're doing another diagonal line coming down and you're going to stop and we're gonna do a curved line, but this time it's going the opposite way. So think kind of more like a frown or a rainbow. And that's gonna to connect to the brown part of her clothing. We're gonna do a diagonal line, um, kind of lining it up where I imagine that line had ended at the top. I'm doing a diagonal line that comes out. And then I'm gonna do a wavy line up and down and that looks like that fabric is kind of moving. We're going to be doing a big curved line thing kind of like a rainbow or a frown. You're going to start kind of near her shoulder and you're going to come up to the top of her head and then you're going to continue that line on the opposite side and you're going to stop whenever you hit either the cross or her shoulder and yours might be a different spot than mine. We're gonna do another curve. So kind of leaving a little bit of space between the edge of the habit and kind of near the shoulder, I'm going to do another curved line that comes up, goes across her forehead and comes down on the opposite side like this. And I can erase these parts of the head because I no longer need those guidelines. I'm going to add a line across the top underneath the habit, creating this white part. 
and I want to have a little bit of it showing over here on the edge. So I'm going to just draw a similar curve, kind of matching the curve of the side of the face. And that creates a hint of that white part kind of peeking out. You can add that on the opposite side as well if you wish. To finish up her face, I'm just going to do a simple little face. So right about the middle of that oval shape for her head, I'm going to put two circles for her simple eyes. And I think I want to have just like the hint of an eyelash. So I'm going to do one little line on the left and one little line over on the right. In between her eyes and the bottom of her chin, I'm going to put a little curve, think kind of like a small smile, and that creates the bottom of her nose. And I'm going to add one line here to create a hint of the bridge of her nose. I'm going to do another line that's halfway between the bottom of her nose and the bottom of her chin for her smiling mouth. And you, of course, can make her face look different than what I'm doing in mine. And last but not least, we're going to put some eyebrows above her eyes. So unless there's any other changes that you want to make to your artwork, like maybe you want to give St. Therese a halo, or maybe you want to draw something in the background, feel free to make those changes. And when you're ready, we can start to color it. I'm going to be using markers, but you of course can use your favorite art supplies. And when I use markers, I love to use black pens like this to help make the details pop. Thank you so much for following along. I would love to see how your drawings turned out. Feel free to tag me on social media. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, know that I post new Catholic inspired art tutorials here on my channel every week. If you would like to donate something from my art supply wish list, you can check out my Buy Me A Coffee page. I want to remind you that you are loved. God loves you very much and he loves your artwork very much. Thank you so much for drawing along with me and I'll see you in the next tutorial.